What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first episode of Justin Mitchin. I'm your host, Mitch Mitchy, and over here, I got my buddy Abe. Abe, how's it going? Pretty good, man. How was your 4th of July? Oh, it was good. I'm excited, man. First episode, we got plenty to talk about. Big day in sports. You know, we got Patrick Mahomes, that big contract extension, NBA players opting out, MLB schedule drops. So we got plenty to get in with it. Uh, how was your fourth? Pretty good, man. Uh, so since I live in Chicago, though, you usually have some fireworks at Navy Pier. But this year mm -hmm. they didn't. And I drove out about an hour and the fireworks were terrible. That sucks. So we had like our little neighborhood fireworks going on and stuff. Um, so, Cause here in Oregon, it's illegal to have like the big shooters. Oh really? The big like blow up ones. Yeah, like to do them like in person. So like you have to go to like watch like somebody who has a permit and everything. So you can't buy them. You just do like the little fountains, which is fine. But with my disorder, any loud noises. So somebody on our street blew up a big mortar that did it wrong. So it popped out the side, yeah. like came out on the street blowing up. I jumped under the car. I literally ducked and got covered. <laughs> Do, so the, the city doesn't do fireworks out there? Yeah, so they do fireworks out here, but, like, you can't, like, have illegal fireworks. Like, you have to go buy them at the reservation or in Washington. Oh, but, like, the city itself does or yeah. they do? I'm pretty sure they yeah. did. Um, I mean, it sounds like a war zone. Like, Friday, Saturday night for sure was sounding like a war zone. I was like, great, this is awesome. I didn't go to bed till late. Yeah, I mean... But last night wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, I saw a thing where, um, like, California actually banned... I don't know if you saw the video, but they they made it, like, illegal for um, anyone to shoot off fireworks in L.A., I think, or just in California. But, like, if you saw sense. the video, like... It was insane. Like, it's literally, there's, like, an aerial view of it, and everywhere they're just fireworks. Well, they don't want everybody to look like JPP, <laughs> right. like, missing, like, part of his hands and stuff. That's funny. So, let's get into this Patrick Mahomes business, yeah. dude. So, 10 years, contract extension, locks him in for the next 12 with Kansas City. So, he's going to have $450 million dollars with 140 injury guaranteed. I mean, I like the deal a lot. He's done a lot of good with the team. He's done a lot of, I don't think he's done too much bad. I mean, for being the 10th overall pick, came in as gonna, was gonna back up Alex Smith and they just said, bye Alex Smith and brought this gunslinger up. I like how he plays, he stays out of the, he rolls out of the pocket, he doesn't get sacked too much. I mean, I'm definitely excited. I mean, what's he done? He's the fastest player to 75 touchdowns in 30 games, surpassing Dane Marino. I mean, those are big shoes, big records. Yeah. If he keeps doing what he's doing, we might not be talking about Tom Brady anymore as the greatest quarterback of all time. I think this kid has the talent. He has the arm. He has the mindset. Yeah, I mean, he, he did really well in the playoffs. That's my biggest thing, right? Like, 12 touchdowns in the 2019 postseason. That's that's pretty good. I mean, the highest, I think, to bring bring up your team, um, Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs <laughs> has the, oh, most, the most the most touchdowns Aaron Rodgers has thrown in a, play, uh, in a postseason is nine, um, which, you know, is really good. You know, most people don't even end up throwing that. And here he is at 24 years old throwing 12 touchdowns, winning the Super Bowl MVP, oh. winning the Super Bowl, and... He's doing it fairly easily, it looks like, when we watch the show. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at it, too, he had five. He went 5-0 and this season, being down by 14 or more points. I mean, he's a comeback kid right there. That's what gets me excited. You know, When he's the quarterback of whatever team, it looks like it's going to be Kansas City for the next 10 years, but when he's behind the center, the, the, you could be down by 20. He might get you back in the game. I mean, I remember watching the playoffs this year and go, oh, they might be losing to Tennessee, and the next thing you look, he's pulling it out of his butt. Like, he did it in the Super Bowl. Didn't every playoff game, they were down by, like, 14 or more. He, he's a very talented young man at 24, signing that mega contract. Uh, they're going to have to backload it, though. If they don't backload it, they're going to be screwed in the future, um, getting more talent to surround him. I would say probably do $150 million on the back side. They've got to do something like that. Otherwise, yeah. It, they're screwed in the long run. And backloading it makes a lot of sense, right? Because we've got Tyreek Hill, we've got Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and not to mention, I'm sure there are other players that you know will get 
paid more, but here are three players that if they keep up the same level of performance, if Tyreek Hill doesn't get into trouble outside of the field. Um, <laughs> I mean, so good at doing that. <laughs> um, and, you know, and Chris Jones, you know, he's Aaron Donald. Behind Aaron Donald, he's probably the best next person at his position. And, you yeah, know, I don't think there's anyone better. I mean, Aaron Donald's an absolute right. freaking an athlete. Right. And so, you know, Chris Jones is going to need to get paid. He's already said he's not playing unless he gets paid 20 mil. We've got Tyreek Hill, who will get paid for sure if he can stay out of trouble and keep up his uh, performance. And Travis Kelsey, arguably the number one tight end in the NFL right now. And he will definitely get paid. So here we have this mega contract going to Patrick Mahomes with still a lot of people on the team to still pay. So for now, I mean... And doesn't Frank Clark's getting paid big yeah, money this Frank, year as Frank, well? Frank, Frank Clark. <laughs> what is he, like $19 million this year? Yeah, it was around 19 And then the thing that's like blowing my mind, I'm looking at some of these names. You got like... You got Russ, you got Big Ben, you got Rodgers, all in that, like, 35 to $33.5 million area. And he's making going to be making $10 more million than those guys are? I mean, we're talking about potentially three Hall of Famers. I, not even potential. They're, all, they're three Hall of Famers. Yeah. Um, and this kid is still, I mean, he gets hurt next year. We don't know. Like, he's not making the Hall of Fame then. He, He'd be like talking about like Michael Vick. They should have, could have, would have. I don't think that we'll see that ever happening because he knows how to get out of the pocket, roll out. His no look pass is ridiculous. He stole that from my team, Mr. Brett Favre. And see, throw shots, I come right back. Um, yeah, the Chiefs moving forward, I think they'll be fine. Ba- backload the contract, and then especially like in those seven, eight, nine, ten years down the road, like with it backloaded, you'll be able to restructure contracts that way. And either him like taking less money or other players taking less. I think they have a plan, and it already worked once. It already worked this year once, and I think from now on they're going to be a team that we're going to be looking at either in the AFC Championship game every year or in the Super Bowl. Bas- basically, I don't the see next Patriots dynasty team. The next yeah. Patriots dynasty dynasty. Yeah. I don't see a team, I'm thinking, that's not really can run with them at the moment. Definitely not. I mean, the Raiders have some young, good talent. Maybe the Patriots. I'm excited to see this Patriots team. Cam Newton at quarterback. Yeah, see, a Cam- and he signed a nice deal. I think a lot of people like to hate on Cam, right? Um, I had a little sure chat, not really a chat. I had like a one comment uh, discussion with JB. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Cam is not someone that, you know, Three, four years ago, you would look at him and expect him to get paid the vet minimum in the NFL, right? He's got, he's got an MVP, and he's... He's got the body, right. he's got the arm. And he's getting paid less than, you know, second, third string quarterbacks that are sitting on the bench, right? Like, it yeah. doesn't make sense, but, I mean, he's going to the Patriots. He's got Bill Belichick, who, you know, is notoriously good at taking these, you know, washed up people... And making them good. Randy Moss. Right. Patriot, Patriot way. way. Um, I was a Patriots guy. Like, being a Packers guy. But, like, when Packers could get knocked out of the playoffs or not make it, I was definitely, like, Tom Brady and the Patriots. Yeah, they're cheaters and whatever you can say. But they know how to win. He knows how to get the best out of everybody. If Cam Newton can just be quiet and do it the Patriot way and don't do an Antonio Brown saga-like movements, which I think... Cam Newton's a lot smarter than A.B. Um, yeah, and you know, like, it I, it makes sense, right? Like, A.B. was really, like, off his shit, right? Like, he was, I don't know what he was doing, but he was losing CTE. it, right? It, it's completely CTE. Like, concussion symptoms are not a joke. I deal with them every day, and I definitely think that was part of it. And not getting the right help he needed. A.B. is a terrific athlete. He seems like... When he's in the right place of mind, he can be a good dude, but he's not there, and he's definitely not being a good dude, how he's treating everybody, especially the women around him. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's, that's I think, that's an issue that we've seen repeatedly in the NFL, right, with NFL players. Yeah, Junior Seau, and just... Uh, and it's... RIP all those guys, and yeah. It, I think... Um, I guess getting a little off topic here, like they're not, it's not really talked about as much. Like we chalk it up to, oh yeah, this guy's, you know, 
he's lost it. And then, you know, we never talk about why they got to that point. And I think that... It's because the NFL, the money, yeah. they cut it out. They're like, we don't want to hear this. Yeah. This is bad for the brand. Yep. This isn't going to work for the brand. So let's 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 talk, let's let's talk move it off to the side. We'll put it on next day, back page news. And don't worry about it because that hurts the brand. But another big topic, man. We got NBA players opting out, not wanting to play. I mean, some of them are sick. I get that. Trevor Ariza, I get it. It's the only time he can see his son. Visitation rights are important, but I mean, there's guys who are not playing because just because they want to get paid. I think that is an absolute joke to the game. Um, you don't want to help your team. I get it at the end of the day. You're an athlete. You get paid, blah, 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 blah. But to just say, I'm not going to play because I'm coming up with free agency and I don't want to get hurt or something. I don't want you on my team then. Uh, to me, you're soft. You're like, ah, I'm just here for the money. Whatever, dude. Um, get out of here. Go find somewhere else to play for. And I wouldn't want to be his teammate. Like That would definitely be hard for me to play with him or respect him anymore. Definitely. Um, try. I can't remember his name. It's um, Davis Burton. Bob. Yeah. What? Burton's? Yeah, Davis Burton. I'm trying to pull it up, but for some it's reason. Loading, yeah. My computer's not working. Yeah, it's not loading anymore. But Davis Burton. <sighs> come on, man. Come. I mean, I'm stealing that from Chris Carter. Come on, man. Like... <laughs> Be be an athlete. Like you're getting to play basketball. You're top one percenter in the world, and you don't want to play because you're not making enough. I get we're living in this weird world. You gotta stay in this bubble. The only people that I'm like really like concerned for are the ones who are high risk or already have have kids. Like Avery Avery Bradley. I mean, this is his year to win a ring, and he's opting out for family reasons. And I get that. You are the man of the house. You are a man. Your obligation is to your family first. Not because you want more money. I mean, because this you can make more money. You ball out in eight games, and that's all you get is eight games. You ball out. You look great. Some, somebody's going to be taking your spot um, for sure. I, Trevor Ariza, visitation rights. Victor Oladipo. Um, I saw he was sitting out, but I didn't get the reason So, Victor it. Oladipo was injured, right, um, this past right. season. Um, he Oh, the quad injury. Right, the quad injury, and he did not... I think part of his reason was, you know, not wanting to come back too early. I mean, you know, they they play the Heat, like the Heat, Heat Pacers, right? Like it's the Heat are pretty good. They've got Jimmy Butler, they've got Tyler Hero, they've got uh, Bam. Hero, you know, they're, all, they're good. And yeah, um, the, Bam's a stud. He yep. came out of absolutely nowhere in my right, opinion. and that's you know his decision kind of makes sense, right? Like he he carries the Pacers team. And if he's not playing, more than likely, they're not gonna win. But also, he doesn't wanna risk it just to, you know, there's a shortened season, um, like the playoffs is all messed up, the season's been messed up. Him not coming back makes sense. He's, maybe he wouldn't have even played if it was, you know, regular, um, regular season, like he, his, just his injury. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, and Brogdon also tested positive for COVID. I know that. So I get that. Like, that's around the team, and he's going to have to miss a little bit. I've seen facilities are shutting down. I was I just saw that um, bars in California are shutting down now. So, like, are we even going to be able to have this NBA season? I don't know. I 25 players out of 300, uh, 351 have been positive so far. That's not a huge number. I'm not completely concerned. I mean, it's still less than 10%. It's about eight. I I don't know. Um, we're living in weird times. We're living in times that we've never lived lived in before. Um, I I want to see basketball back. I don't know what effects it's gonna have. Like when, because we already know they're playing eight games, so they're playing every other day. That's gonna take sixteen days to play those games. Plus, playoffs take two months. Like, are they gonna give them three days rest? But they're staying in Orlando, so I think they should still be playing every other day. Even though I think it's ridiculous, you're an NBA athlete, top top shape in the world. You should be able to play back to backs. I mean, they did it all the times in the '80s, '70s, and '60s, and had no problem, even in the '90s. But it's all about that paper. You'll hear that a lot from me, man, with athletes. Um, the playoff picture, it's going to be interesting. Um, we'll see, like what teams can get hot, what teams aren't going to get hot. 
Um, I hope my Blazers can pull it out of their heads. We got a lot of guys coming back. I mean, you got Dane, CJ doing their thing like always. Melo's going to be coming off the bench with Collins. I hope Collins starts. Melo comes off the bench. I think, I don't know, you could have it either way, having Nurkic start or have Whiteside start. I mean, they both, Nurkic is more offensive-minded. Um, I mean, Whiteside's offensive-minded in the same way, but he can't pop out and shoot, which Nurk can do. Um, but they both are going to grind out and get get those rebounds, which is what Portland didn't have last year. I mean, Miles Leonard's softer, softer than melted butter. He's not going to go and fight for that ball. I mean, Collins is. Zach will tell, show you that he, he fouls out plenty. I mean, and he's not scared to get down and dirty. And that's a, that's a tough job that the NBA doesn't have anymore. They don't have a guy who wants to fight for the ball. And um, I like that with Zach Collins. He's young. He's hungry. I mean, this Blazer team could could make a run if they get hot but really what it's going to be it's these eight games you haven't played in four months it's it's kind of like who can get hot and who can get not on those teams that are kind of on the bubble um i mean and like i was saying it's definitely harder because there's less te- less games right like there's definitely yeah. like that aspect of streakiness where you know i mean we saw it with jr smith going off for in cleveland right like there's no way you yeah. expect J.R. Smith, oh, wow, like he's going to carry the Cavs team. Like, obviously they have LeBron, but it's not the same. You don't expect, you know, Jason Tatum could, to- like, he's not that he's not dominant now, but he could easily dominate the Sixers, right? Like, yeah, being dropping 40 he could, points a night out he of could. nowhere. Yeah, he could. And, I mean, it, it, that's, that's, you can say that about any team, and, you know, they might win the first round, but then what's to say that they'll stay hot throughout the entire thing, too, right? Like, right. You never know. It's it's a weird thing because we've never experienced something like this before. Seen yeah. anything like this? And like, where where's basketball gonna go? Right. Like, because like I was saying earlier and got off track was you got, um, the NBA season starts usually October thirty first on Halloween, but playoffs last two months. So you're going from August to September. Are we gonna start like mid November, almost December? Are we gonna instead of running eighty two games? Are we gonna run? 60 games like are they gonna switch that up i mean they have two years till their cba coming up i'm pretty sure and so that's probably gonna take a part of it we've already seen with baseball like how that all worked out with uh, definitely baseball going into their cba next year um this upcoming year i mean starting up whenever play winter meetings start in december so we'll see it with that i definitely think um I hope this is good. I think this is good. People need it. I mean, I'm excited. I've been watching the TBT, the basketball tournament, and it's good basketball. It's not NBA basketball, but it gives me something to watch where I'm not watching, like, mindless TV all day. It gives me somebody a rooting interest. I mean, I'm definitely going for the Golden Eagles. Like, always at the stake with, like, the Wisconsin side, even though I've never been – I'm not from there. Um, Marquette, baby. Woo! Uh, (laughs) But just that kind of thing, that little bit of sports – gives us something that we've been missing like we've talked about this like in private like we both do in jiu-jitsu and stuff but we're not like huge mma fans and i like catch it every night because i'm like every time it's on because i'm like i'm craving for that stuff but we might not be having to wait much longer because starting on july 23rd we got baseball baby i'm so excited Baseball's back. The schedule released today. There's a lot of rules. There's a lot of stuff. We're going from, you know, normally 162 games to 60. Yep. So instead of this long, broad out season, it's a sprint. That's huge, it, right? That's huge because, you know, baseball is very – this This is how it goes. So I read something. This isn't from me. So I'm quoting someone, but I don't know who I'm quoting. But here, here here's what I read. Baseball in a regular season, you win 50, you, win, you lose 50. That's for sure. And what right. you do past that is up to you, right? Which makes sense. You got 62 extra games to make up whatever you did in the first 100, right? And with it being only 60 games, like, you know, there's teams that go on, like, like I said about the NBA season, like, they go on streaks where they do really well. Somebody goes, you know, hits, like, 400 for a month, it's – that team's probably doing pretty well, right? So it's hard to argue, well, like, is it really going to be the same with only 60 games when we're used to having 100 more games on top of that? I think you're going to still say, like, it's a full season. We all know that it's going to be the COVID season. 
But I mean, definitely, we're gonna, we might see somebody hit 300. I don't know. My bet might be DJ Lynn Mayhew. He can hit the, he hits the ball really well, keeps it all going. Um, but it's definitely who can sprint out the fastest. I don't think we're gonna see somebody hit more than 20 home runs. I, there's been, five, I think, in the last 10 years, it's been, it's been done though. Like out of 60 games, like the team 60 games, not the players. It's been done, I think, all but two times in the last 10 years. So it happens, but it's such a different year. Like, we're not getting the normal spring training games. You're getting in our squad games, which is completely different than you know what that guy's already going to throw, how he's going to throw you. It's not like you're facing Max Scherzer every day unless you're, you know, the Nationals. But Max isn't going to be giving you it's completely 100% his best because he knows it's against his team. I read there might be some ex. ex Expedited? Oh, I can't say it. Expedited? Ex, expi no, expedition. Expedition. The expedition yeah. games. Those are tough words, people. <laughs> Don't just get a high school education. <laughs> um, but yeah, some expedition. Uh, I'm not even going to say it. Some practice games. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, practice games. There you go. <laughs> uh, -huh. uh Some practice games that definitely, I think you can get three, and they'll be against like the team you're starting up. Mm -hmm. Uh, some dates to circle is starting off. You got the World Series champs against the New York Yankees. That's, That's gonna a be a fun one, game. Yeah. You're gonna see Juan Soto. You're gonna see Garrett Cole in his in the pinstripes for the first time. Um, we'll see how well he does. To going, staying in the same league, going to a different division. Man, hopefully he lives up to that contract. Doesn't have to work completely super hard for the first year of the money since it's only sixty games once again. Yeah. But I'm just excited. Baseball is back. Hopefully we get it. I mean, we got players opting out of there for all kinds of different reasons. I mean, and it seems like instead of the NBA season, it's kind of been like guys are slowly go like slowly dropping in the NBA. And it seems like the in the MLB, like they go to camp and first day they're gone. Like you got King Felix is dropping out because the Braves, Freddie Freeman got sick. He got COVID and. Um, Nick Markakis as well, which I thought that this would have been a huge year for a guy like Nick Markakis because NL, it's universal DH, which is so much different than anything. I, it's blowing my mind. I don't know how much I'm going. I'm going to watch like as many games, but like the NL to me is like, I'm an AL guy. I'm a Mariners fan. So then going over to the N NL, it's a different form of baseball. I'm seeing a pitcher hit, you know, the eight. Usually the eight-man batting is, is an easy out. So these pitchers now usually have six outs where a game where they know they can not have their best stuff, now it's every every batter counts. Because, I mean, the eight-man in the NL is not their greatest hitter, and most pitchers can't hit for shit. Um, you know what? But, the thing that I'll miss the most is Bartolo Colon's batting. Yeah, with big sexy. Yeah. I feel like I am like like big sexy reincarnated man. Yeah, I mean like watching him hit that home run. You know, I usually don't watch too much baseball, but watching I was watching that game where he hit the home run, and it was it was great, like a great moment. You know, and I'm just like yeah. I hope this rule doesn't stay. It's just for this season. Mm -hmm. I I don't know if I want to see it for like the rest of it. I really like. Um, I like having two different leagues, two different things. I know a lot of pitchers. I know Jack Flaherty's came out and said that he, every time he pitches, he wants to hit. Pitcher for the Cardinals. I mean, I know there's a lot of pitchers that want to hit, but we'll see in the CBA coming up what's going to happen. A lot of rule changes, and it's going to throw off some players. You can't chew seeds, can't spit. Like, is it going to be more uptight in, like, the dugouts and stuff? With, with um, because I've seen some managers coming out saying there's so many distractions with, like, COVID and everything, but they're all in the same hotel. So a lot of young guys can't go out and party and do all the fun stuff. No nights out on the town, but, like, no spitting. I know Charlie Morton likes to get the bullet gum and go like this on his teeth. And then you can't touch, lick your fingers when you're pitching. All these kind of, like, crazy things. And the roster is being expanded. We're going to see some young talent coming out. The, We're going to see some. You know, with the stuff with the rule changes, just want to go back a little bit. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested to see how they're going to – like manage pitchers not licking their fingers or players not licking their fingers you know i played baseball in high school it is not something right. i think of right like you don't think like okay here i am i'm gonna lick my finger now like it just you're you're standing there it just happens right so then what happens when somebody does it do they stop the game and then 
say, hey, like, here, take some hand, hand sanitizer. sanitizer. <laughs> Are they going to eject you? Yeah. Right I don't know. We'll have to see. Because, like, I'm definitely, like, just thinking about, it. like, when I pitch, I pitched in high school. I pitched, played baseball my whole life. Like, licked your finger, rubbed it on your yeah. pants, got going. Yeah. And, like, to me, that's, like, that's just so natural, like, spitting. Yeah. Like, right now I feel like I have to spit from talking so much. <laughs> Um, but like on a baseball field, you just get there and you start spitting, you get your seeds in your bubble gum. I mean, guys aren't going to be able to chew. Like I've read stories and heard stories about guys who's like, they can't play if they can't have a dip, like that kind of stuff. That's like going to bug them. And we'll, we'll see, probably get some, like the snuff pouches where you just swallow it. I don't, I don't know. Um, testing on players. I think that's important. I think they're going to do a good job every other day. Once they got all those tests in, is that enough? Like, how often do you want to see players getting tested? I mean, I see the, the thing with testing is it really depends on what, how much exposure they have, right? Like, is, I didn't really read up on this too much, but are they going to be traveling, like, around, or is it sort of contained, like, in the... No, it's, it's full, full country, okay. so, like, see, say, say, like, the, but it's going to be contained by region, so, like, okay. the Mariners aren't going to go and play the Yankees. Okay. They're going to play 40 games in division. Okay. But that's crazy. Like, if you think of, like, the Mariners, they're all the way up in Seattle. Yeah. they got to go all the way down to Houston. Yeah. Like, so they probably have the highest... Travel. Like, most travel yeah. ground to hit, but you're in a plane. Those planes are all going to be clean. Yeah. Nobody else is going to be allowed on the... And you can't, um... And, like, a lot of players, what I was reading is you're going to have to do your own temperature oh. um, before you even go, like, out to the ballpark and stuff. And if it's over 100 and 100. 100.4... You go to stay home. Like, you won't even go and get tested. Yeah, and see, if it's if it's like that, then, you know, it, it seems like they're taking the proper precautions, right? Like, if they're traveling within their own traveling party, um, they're not, um, obviously, they're not going to let their players to go out and party, like you said. You know, no one's, like, right. going out in town, like, going to clubs or anything. I mean, if every team is going by these rules, then it makes sense. Like, it should be fine. Yeah, social distancing, right. wearing your mask when you're out and about. I mean, I'm, I know a lot of people are against it, but you got to do what you're doing to keep yourself and everybody else safe. There's a, there, there's more than just yourself at risk um, here, yeah. worrying about it. Yeah. At risk. Uh, players that are sitting out, I kind of touched some of that. Uh, Ian Desmond, the only, I, it's not that I don't agree that he's sitting out. I mean, I get you got to do your social justice and stay, on what, what your, stay by what your stance is and everything. But, I mean, you have an obligation to the Rockies. You're a contract player, man. Like I got on the NBA guy earlier, like, once again, I don't I don't think Ian should get paid. Like, if you want to stand out and protest and not play, there should be repercussions. I doubt that will happen. He'll still probably get his bag. But, um, you know, do you. I'm proud of you that you have, that M Mr. Desmond, that you have what you want to stand up for and stuff. I may may not always agree with it, but I definitely think um, you're doing the right thing by you. Uh, with Mike Leake and Ryan Zimmerman, I know both of the Ross brothers are sitting out. Um, Ryan Zimmerman I, I, makes sense to me. Ryan Zimmerman is 35 years old. He got so paid. Injury prone. Injury prone. Got his ring. <laughs> hey, man, if I was Ryan I'm Zimmerman, just retire, then, like, I'm sitting off. I'm sitting down, too. I'm good. Then retire. Yeah. Then go somewhere else. Like, just retire. Call, call it a career. You played 11 seasons in the MLB. I think you have two All-Stars. Yep. Like, we know you're a good player. You got your ring. Yep. I mean, how, how is this weird season going to, like, Do deal anything. with free agency? Right. Like, that's, yeah. like, especially, like, we got all these young guys coming up and stuff, and like I'm all wondering about like service time because we know how baseball is with service time. Like they did it with Chris Bryan. Like you'll get right to that day and they'll send you back down. So I wonder like we'll see some young guys get some at bats, and did they just get sent down or like what are they all gonna do for everything? It's a it's definitely inter inter interesting season. Because they get to carry, what, 30 men for the first week. Then it goes down to 26 to 24. I think, like, every week, like, they start, like, move it down. And then you're on your 24-man roster. And no, like, 40-man roster. Like, the Brewers, they love having that late September 40-man roster. And you're not going to have that. You got, I mean, you got your taxi squad. But you probably, there will be rules on how many you can send up and down. And all that kind of stuff. And it'll be interesting to see what player, like, if players get COVID during the season, like, how much that affects them. Yeah, I mean, see, if 
I feel like when if if players are going to start getting COVID during the season, then it's either one they're not following guidelines, right? Like they're going out, they're right. not wearing their mask, they're doing something that's causing this, right? Um, if it's within like a team facility, then that entire team has like been exposed to it. So then what happens? Like do they just the team just gets Call eliminated, baseball. like, like they, they stop the season, what happens? There's so many unknown things here, like it's really hard to say, right? Like we can talk about this, but and and you know, like I'm sure everybody in the MLB they've, you know, thought about this. Everybody, the players, you know, the organization, everyone's like thought about this like very deeply, but there's still a lot of unknowns. Like you never know what could happen. Like we're in this situation because we didn't know what was gonna happen, right? How to expect right. it, and it, it came. Yeah. Um, another interesting, interesting with this season is sixty games. Like, what kind of injuries are we gonna see? I bet a lot of soft tissue, like boo boos and that stuff. And are more guys gonna sit out that, like Justin Verlander just started pitching off the mound. Like, is he like how long is he gonna be able to throw for? Uh, Michael Kopech coming off Tommy John's. You got guys like that who have had serious injuries that are coming back from it. I mean. I'm going on two different ages. Like Kopech's a young kid just getting ready, getting his career started, and Verlander's at the end of it. Yeah. And you got Shohei Otani's coming back from Tommy John. Yeah. From Tommy John's. Hey, your yeah, guy. Uh, and he's gonna. Your guy Hanniger is coming back from. <laughs> well, we'll see if Hanniger even makes it back. Yeah. I mean, he ruptured his testicle, mm-hmm. and then like Torres then had an ab like yep. problem, and then a herniated disc. Like. So I. We'll see. I, I I read up a little bit about him, and it's. The way it was worded, it said that he just wouldn't be available for the beginning of the season, which makes yeah, me think, Yeah, so he like, might come and play. Yeah. Like, they might push him. Is it worth it? I say set him out for the year. Is it <laughs> yeah, worth is it? it? The worth Mariners it? are going to win, like, 10 games. <laughs> let's be honest. I mean, but if any, like, funky year we're talking about, like, with baseball or anything, for the Mariners to make the playoffs would be this year with no fans, to break the curse where nobody could celebrate it, it would be this year they would yeah. do it. Because if you looked at the history of the Mariners, they always are doing weird, wacky, mm-hmm. odd things. Yeah. I mean, the team's been around for 43 years, and they made the playoffs four times. Yeah. Like, it's once a decade they may do it. Um, not even that, because they did it, they, it didn't take them. The 70s, they didn't do it. The 80s, they didn't do it. They did it twice in the 90s and twice into the 2000s. Yep. Um, we'll see that. I, I'm excited to see Shohei. Shohei's going to pitch every once a week, and he's going to hit four times yep. a week. Like that, what kind of numbers is Shohei gonna put up? That I, you know, I'm I'm interested to see that as well. Like he, if you watch, so I was watching some tape, like one of his, basically like a compilation of his like hitting his highlights, right? And he he's got a really nice swing, like it. It's compact. It's, it's, yeah, it's very quick. He's got quick hands. He hits really well, and then on top of that, he's pitching like it's. D- my question is, like, you know, how all other pitchers, do they not hit, right? Even if they're good hitters, do they not hit because they want to be rested for when they start? Or do they not hit because they they're just bad? They hit on their bad? starts. It's just like a bet. I think it's just a thing to hit on their hit on their starts. And I mean, like, they'll, like, do batting practice. But it's MLB pitching again. Yeah. Like, you, most people can't be good at both. I mean, with these big leaguers throw, show stuff is, it's nasty. So I think from hitting like off a soft toss tee like once every week and stuff, I think that's what really throws these guys off. They're not hitters. They don't have like that mentality. I think Shohei brings something unique to the game. And I mean, I'm excited with the the Angels could be one of those teams that gets hot quick. I mean, but Mike Trout might not play, dude. We haven't even hit that. Like the best baseball player that I've ever seen and probably the best baseball player arguably of all time mm-hmm. might not play um, what do you think about what's your thoughts on that okay <laughs> let me go first I'll, I'll go to you first man you go first i talk enough right He's the best baseball player of all time, arguably. They think there, there's nothing the guy can't do. He, he's a five-tool player. I mean, he is 
the man of the sport. He's the face of the sport. And I get it, having a baby. I understand that. But we just talked about a guy who's getting paid a lot of money. Patrick Mahomes. Who do you just suppress to be the all-time highest paid athlete ever? Mike Trout. Mike Trout's making like $44.9 million this year. All right, Mike, you got to play. I get it. You're going to see this baby, this beautiful baby, and that's a big deal in your life. It's your first kid. But, Mike, you also have an obligation to the Angels, to the MLB, to the fans. This baby's not going to remember those two two months you missed, those four months if you hit the playoffs and stuff. I mean, it might hurt you, but we need you over here in the MLB. I mean, th those words, people aren't going to like it. I don't really care. Um, I We need Mike Trout in the baseball. He's the face of the – he's the face – of this league and this league just started promoting players well like some of these videos i've been seeing like popping up like baseball's back like i'm like where was this when i was growing up i mean i was that kid that like was a baseball junkie anyways like i was baseball tonight every night i was espn like i don't wa wa like start watching tv shows till i was like in my 20s and now i'm like like seeing this stuff's getting me back getting me ready to be like yes baseball's back the nba's back and it, it could not happen. We could be, like, talking for months about next March would be the, the next time we talk about baseball. And that could not happen because they got the CBA coming up. I think this season is, they get baseball in is going to be huge, especially with, like, the CBA because we saw poorly that way with everything. Like, players not getting good faith, argue, getting the good faith they wanted from the owners. Owners, like, hiding stuff. I think the owners really signed over this because they don't want the players to see the books. And Because it's, because you see those books, players are going to be like, you make this much at, for one game? And I'm making this much? Nah, those are businessmen. Those are ruthless, genius yeah. businessmen and, that don't want their money And seen. also part of it, like, you know, um, so I, I, a while back, like, I was reading a bit up reading up a bit about like how MLB like licenses and stuff was like works right and MLB right. very strongly um, like controls their content so if you go on YouTube you look up you know like whatever NBA highlights player highlights game highlights whatever it's all out there Everywhere. right like it's super accessible um, they even have like a portal where, you know, if you have a certain amount of subscribers, I don't, I'm not exactly sure, like technical details of that. How YouTube algorithms yeah, work. But <laughs> not the math pod. <laughs> math pod. I'm the, you might know math. I, I don't even know how to count the five. Yeah, so the, the way, you know, NBA really lets you use their content and it's very easy for NBA fans to find this and MLB is not the same way. Does that also do you think that also affects the game in a negative way like where they're trying to control it so much that it's like you know like you said like where was all this content when you were growing up when we were you know until now i have not seen this the quality of content that has come out for the mlb recently since this restart started happening i have not seen I'm 25. I, mine, I can't. I don't know how much I can speak to that. Like I'm sure. mindset, bro. I think a lot of it was you got a lot of old heads in the pot. A lot of old hands. Baseball is a pure sport. It's an old guy sport. A lot of people yep. will say. Um, and now we have these young, awesome players coming in, and it, it's hard not to to um, promote a guy like Francisco Lindor. Like he's smiling. He's going. He's happy. I mean, the Cubs got out. Um, Javi Baez, another like, got all these Latin players who like are like super exciting and fun to watch and young. And you look back when we're growing up, we had like Sammy Sosa would have been just as fun <laughs> if they marketed the right way. I think it was a lot of the older players, yeah. not not older players, but older older executives not understanding how to. I mean, they're late to the Twitter game, yep. they're late to the YouTube yep. game. But if we're talking about like. The, I think the NBA is the players' league. Yeah. If we're talking about like the big three: NBA, NFL, uh -huh. um, MLB. The NBA definitely is a players' league, and they know how to market. Yep. They've been great at marketing for twenty years. Uh -huh. uh, the NFL has finally stepped into it, but the NFL is like the MLB very much controls their viewership and what you can see and how everything is going. Yep. Um, but I wanted to move over to the hobby because okay. we're supposed we're both card guys. I'm more on the baseball side. You kind of baseball, football. You kind of sit more basketball, baseball, yep. right? Basketball, um, football. I'll do what football. What do you think about? But 
you know. It, do you do football? A I little do, bit. I, I, so I kind of sit like football. Like you can see behind me, it's mostly this is this whole like section's all Mariners, mm-hmm. um, and then like to my left is like my little Packer collection yeah. that I got going on. Yeah. But I think hobby prices, like trying to get some Bowman right now or like Mosaic. I don't want to say we're in the junk wax era because they're not overproducing to the point where I guess like back then you could go to like a Walmart or like every grocery store, every gas station, even like, like retail stores were selling cards. Now you have to go to certain, you can go to Target, Walmart, maybe Walgreens to get them. And then you have your hobby shops. Did you know that Party City sold cards? (laughs) What? Party City sells cards. I saw someone tweet this where Party City, they found like, an old box of 2017 basketball cards at Party City, which is okay. Like, I mean, I would love to find some at Party City, but yeah. I can't even find anything in Target, Walmart. Like, my LCS is selling, you know, eighty-five dollar retail mosaic stuff blasters. for eighty-five. Yeah. Bu- my LCS does the same yeah. thing, and I'm not gonna, not gonna name names <coughs> these collectibles, <laughs> um, but. I mean, go in, because he's right next to Target, like, literally, you could, like, throw a baseball and maybe hit, like, Target in the mall. If you have a cannon, I don't. It's gone. Um, but going to buy all the retail stuff and then flipping it, I mean, it's happening online. Every day I'm seeing people on Twitter, like, going, like, look what I bought. You want some? And I'm like, no, because I can't afford $80 for a blaster, let alone sometimes 20 And nowadays, you don't even, with your blasters, get an autograph. Like, you might get lucky if you get a good parallel. So, like, I definitely think with prices, like, rolling up and, like, Topps' website's an absolute mess. You, you try to get Sapphire or anything good, you get kicked off right away. Uh, it's it's an absolute – I the hobby's great because it's growing so much. And people are excited and we got new people, and I love that. I love seeing new faces in something. Like, people like us who were collected as kids, walked away from it, and then came back and became big-time collectors – um, that's definitely fun, but then you're taking it away from the person that doesn't understand the game. Like I started, like when I got back into the hobby about a year ago, I was retail, retail, retail. I didn't know how to work eBay. I didn't know how like to work Twitter. So like, that's how I was building my, my collection, my stacks, the selling stuff. And I definitely think we need, we do have some people that are doing it, but like more people influencing like this new up and comers not to flip as much not to take it all away from the beginners or the kids because not everybody can get on you know on on the ebay or whatever wherever people buy car their cards twitter ebay and like lo- figure out what they want a pc and how to do it and a lot of joy is as a kid is going into target or walmart and buying that ten dollar hanger or that twenty dollar blaster, and you're not you're not seeing anything. The only thing that's left is score. Who wants score? Right. I mean, I like opening up score, but <laughs> it's not a great product. See, not going to make your money. My like my thing is it. I don't think that it's necessarily wrong for people to you know buy it and then flip it, right? Like. Flip life, yay, whatever, Gary V, cool. Like, it's it's fine. Like, I, it doesn't bother me as much. And I think, like, if people have that opportunity, like, if you don't do it, somebody will, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. It's always an opportunity. It's like when Kobe died. Right. All of a sudden, Kobe starts, like, going for 50 right. like, $500 or, like, 500% of the price that I was sitting right. for. Like, I get that. There's always an opportunity to take. But at the same time, I mean... If there's no, like, good win, like we just talked about in our previous discussion, there's there's either, like, it's always going to be on the shelves and you can grab it, but things then don't have any value mm-hmm. or there's not going to be able to get any and then everything has value to it. It's kind of that, like, fine line we're right now walking mm-hmm. because I did want to – I'm not an – I mean, I'm wearing an NBA jersey. I'm a Blazers guy, but I'm not a huge NBA guy. Yeah. Like, I watch my Blazers, I love my Blazers, but I'm not going to fall, and I'll follow the league here and there, but I didn't want to open up prison to see if I could pull his eye on our jaw just for the hell of it. But you couldn't find it, and then if you wanted a blaster of prison, you're paying for $140 for a blaster. It's probably more than mm-hmm. that. 
which is ridiculous and when like a, a hobby box is going for 750 yep. bucks and it's, and there's no guarantee you're, you're getting, getting that zombie. i mean like the national treasures box like i don't know how many of them you saw like opened like some of them were god awful dog garbage yeah. some are so and bad and like see but that's, the thing is i don't know if you blame you know tops panini um you know the companies or do you blame the people like you know, the pe- people are buying it, but they're buying it with the hope of like, okay, like I like this. I want to buy this because maybe I have a chance at something. It's definitely a gamble, right? Like with anything. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. It's a huge yeah. gamble on like, not every box is going to have a Zion because if every box had a Zion, what's the, yeah. what's the point right. of buying it? it? The half the fun, like I'm not, because I run on the lower budget of being able to buy my mm-hmm. cards. Like I'm definitely not balling in dough um so like i'm very picky like i might have an extra 10 bucks to buy all my cars and get my collection because like everything you see behind me i think two i think one card was more than 20 bucks Mm -hmm. and everything else is under that i'm lucky as a mariners fan to be able to do that because they suck i don't have a griffey because i'm not paying 200 300 dollars for a, gr- a Griffey and the Mariners. Uh-huh. I mean, if I ever get like that 120, I'll definitely just buy a Reds one just to say I have Griffey's auto, the autos at the end of the day. Yeah. But um, y- you know the you're risking it. It's like you open a National Treasures, and that's with football too and baseball. Like, there's sometimes you're gonna hit that big name, uh-huh. and sometimes you're gonna hit a crappy player. But that doesn't mean you can't. You might not get your money back. Uh-huh. I mean, most of the time you're never gonna get your money back in this. In, in this um the best way i do it to get my money back is i buy cards for cheap and then i reflip them opening packs because it doesn't always work but people who want to open packs a great way to stay in the hobby the hobby and be able to get some income going is flipping what you don't want to keep right and that because people will buy anything they'll buy 25 dollars base card yeah i mean and it makes sense right because some people have pcs that you know they person collect a player they can't find a card and they'll buy it but my my thing with the whole flipping, like, I understand that, you know, like, tops is, if I am a business, I'm speaking from a fully business standpoint, right? Like, I am an, a business ex- executive in, you know, one of these bigger companies, and I'm seeing, you know, people are buying, I'm selling. Like, I, I'm selling as, you know, as high as I can, and I will do it. Right. Like that, that makes perfect sense from a business standpoint. When, where do you draw the line between making it easy for collectors and making it easy for your business is the thing, right? Like it's hard to differentiate. I I think they learned their mistake the first time, especially like in the early nineties and late eighties when there's 50 different card companies out there and they're all producing the same things. Mm -hmm. And now you have like Don Ross, the rookies that has a Griffey rookie card in it, bought this for five mm-hmm. bucks. Like that Griffey card's worth nothing. It's a Griffey rookie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a subset. But then you have like certain cards that like you get the eighty nine upper deck rookie for King Griffey Junior that goes for hundreds of dollars. Mm-hmm. But there is that rumor that they're still producing them in ninety one. I think they're doing a much better having a limit on what they're hitting. Mm-hmm of cards because we don't always know the print run or how much i think they saw they shot themselves in the foot top sid with uh top series one mm-hmm. when they're like we're gonna do the million card party and all that stuff that's the only thing i can find you walk into it you walked in any stores top, top series one's yep. everywhere sorry bo bichette you're not gonna have a great high sign rookie yep. um i like the chase i like going in and sometimes there being something that like wasn't supposed to be there and i was already been sold up like you're like oh i got lucky today i found some mosaic or something i think a lot of guys don't mind driving around all over the place trying to find yeah. it because if it's a hobby like it's part of it's part of the game because if you can just walk in to any target and find any mosaic you're not gonna it's not gonna be as fun you're to not chase. gonna appreciate right. it yeah. and but yeah see i i guess sort of circling back to like what i think about flipping i, I think it's okay and it's i think it's actually helped bring people into the hobby and you know you got to be an opportunist like you you know we we, i think we live in a country where if we want to take the opportunity and you know make a ton of money it's okay but another thing i'm a little bit concerned about is how 
these people that are like flippers, right? right. A lot of them don't. I, I don't want to speak generalization thing, but. Generalize, 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 generalize. <laughs> just speak your mind, man. I, I don't just, worry about people hating you. We're going to have enough haters. <laughs> Trust me. I just don't. I don't know if, like, these people people will stick around in the hobby after this whole like because this is i i I think this is a bubble right like this isn't something that's gonna you know jason dominguez prices are not gonna stay at what they are right now it's it's not gonna happen right like look what happened with 2020 project 2020 exactly yeah and it i think this this whole thing with you know covid happening at the same time no sports People are gravitating towards cards because, you know, that's the only form of sports they can get unless they want to watch right. replays or, like, you know, something else. The KBO, right. the Korean. Yeah, you got, like, some stuff yeah. going on. And I, I see your point there. And, like, you know me, America, like, I'm capitalism. <laughs> having that capitalistic idea, like, you can start with nothing and grow a huge yeah. collection. I did it that way. I flipped a lot of stuff. Um, I, it just frustrates me when I see Mosaic going for 80 bucks and you go, the, like the kid part of me like dies like a little bit and goes, oh, that sucks. And then the other, the other part of me, like the capitalistic entrepreneur in me goes, fuck that fucking asshole. Where'd he find that? Cause I want to flip it too. Like I think that's part of me that doesn't like it cause I'm not winning on the yeah. game. Um, that's laziness and not being able to get everywhere I need to yeah. get. Um, here's, see, here's <laughs> what I think happened. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily accurate, but everybody these days, like people that were our age when we were collect, or people, kids that are our age when we were collecting, right, are not really into cards as much as we were back then, right? Like I didn't have an iPad, I didn't have a phone, I didn't have a laptop, I didn't even have internet. Like I had DSL, and if I used it, my mom picks up the phone, she hears it, she's like, "Hey, get off the internet!" Right? Like it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the shit. same, right? So, you know, we had to, we right. had to entertain ourselves other ways. Cards was one of them. And, you know, like I played Yu-Gi-Oh!, I played Pokémon, everything. And that that's how we got our entertainment. And now what's happened is those same kids that didn't have the money to, you know, like throw on cards because, you know, you have to go to Walmart with your mom and say, "Hey, can you buy me?" There's yeah. no way my mom, anybody's mom is, you know, buying me Back then, especially buying eighty dollar mosaic boxes, it's not going to happen. No, right? And no, my mom has enough problems. She goes, "You're a grown ass man. Why are you collecting these right. cards?" And I'm like, "Cause it's fun." Right, and you have to explain to people why you're collecting grown man's autographs. <laughs> exactly, and and base parallels and all these different things. Like my stepdad's like, "You got a crush on Mitch Hanniger?" <laughs> like joking around with me, and I'm like, "No, I his name's Mitch. My name's Mitch. He plays for my favorite team. Yeah, and I like to collect Mitch Hanniger. Yeah. I think it's definitely a thing where people go, "Whoa!" And like my stepdad was a big collector in the '60s. Mm-hmm. He's older. He's sixty three. So like he had, he hit that like golden yeah, age stuff. Yep. And I always joke like, why do why grandma have to throw away your collection? Because you'd probably be yeah, freaking yeah. rich. And see, and um, yeah, go ahead. And like, so he doesn't get like all these different like. Well, you have top series one, then you have series two, but then you have tops tribute and tops finest. And he's always like, cards weren't like this when <laughs> I was around. Like he's like, you, you chase the rookie, and he's like, now you're chasing autos. You're chasing different parallels. Yeah. Like, there's so... And that's what I like about, like, what's going on. Like, I know some people bitch about there's too much different mm-hmm. product. Like, P- Panini and football and NBA, you got Chronicles. and then, Well, Chronicles, Chronicles and all, but then you got Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And I think right now, you got all these different mm-hmm. products that, like, one company puts out for one sport. Mm-hmm. And, like, how many can you buy over and over? And I don't like it, like... Because I get a little bored of, like, collecting the same, same stuff. Like, if yeah. it was one year, like, just one time, we get two print runs a year... Mm-hmm. A tops or three top series two top series one and then you get update i'd be like oh man that's not as fun as like some people can't afford finest and some people don't like the shininess mm-hmm. or like tops chrome and all that stuff they just want paper yep. cards i like shiny stuff Me too shiny stuff's fun <laughs> like i i get excited even if it's like not my player yeah. and i hit like something like all cool and stuff i'm like that's dope mm-hmm. and then the business side of me goes that might be money and then you get on ebay and it's like three bucks and you're like Gosh, yeah Yep, and you know that's that's definitely a valid point. Like, I think Heritage is a great, great, great design, right? I it's, love looks Heritage. Super sick. And uh, and I don't know what I was saying. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, 
circling back. I don't right? know. I mean, I'm crazy. <laughs> circling back to like, like what reverse. I was talking about, right? Like now that those same kids that, you know, in our age, they were collecting. Yeah. Um, now they have the money to dish out on that. You know, they have the funds, they have the ability to sort of go into that with like more money, right? They're about, they, they're, they're willing to dish out, you know, MILCS, $85 mosaic blasters after it came out, like while after, right? Like, I'm not going to lie. I fell into the trap. When it first came out, I bought resale. I ended up breaking most of them. And I broke them at cost for, like, at cost of what I bought for people. Okay. And, you know, it was fine. It was fun. Like, I, wa- I just wanted to break the product, and it was fun. This guy, about two weeks ago, when everything just, like, reopened at the LCS, he had them. I looked at them. I didn't say anything. I was like, ah, whatever. Went back, like, two days ago, and he had, like, top loaders. And he is telling me that he sold them all to some guy. Like, there are people that are willing to dish, dish, dish out the money and, you know, it's not kids anymore. It's, it is, it's adults. And no, right? yeah, that's that. And that, that, I think that's part of the thing. with the Yeah. Hobby. So I don't know if like, you know, is this potentially the last like big bubble that's going to happen in the hobby? Because are there going to be kids, you know, there's definitely going to be collectors for a while. Like there'll be people who are into it. But the population of people that are going to have this, like, nostalgic memory, right? Like, nostalgia of, like, collecting cards. Are we the last of those? Of, the, of those, like, because yeah. we're the last of the junk yeah. wax. I mean, yeah, our, our, definitely our generation, our gap is the last. Because once 2000s hit, like, I t- completely, like, forgot about collecting. Like, I was eight, nine. Like, it wasn't. It was almost not cool anymore at the same time, and um, and stuff was. It was so easy, like to get all everything. You're like, oh, it's not special. I think we're at this where it's gonna bubble, and I think it'll go when sports comes and stuff. It'll go back to what we expected, like where it was at last year, where you can get the products you want, but stuff will still stuff that gets hot will sell out. I definitely think like, if we keep staying where we are, like, what are we gonna? This NBA draft class coming up is a hot class. Like you got Ball, you got Hampton, um, you got Cole Anthony, you got some kids that can ball, even more than this last jo- draft class though, which was absolutely absurd. So I'm kind of wondering, like, if that happens, where are we gonna sit at this huge bubble? And they're gonna, we are gonna be pushed into that junk wax? I don't think so. I think companies are smart enough to know when to hold, pull back. Cause look at Project 2020. I mean, these guys were hitting. 10,000 prints, which I thought was nuts. I had a cut. I should have bought one of the Griffies because I'm like sitting there and I'm like 20 bucks for a card that's not autoed or like something like that. I was like, I don't want to jump. And then three weeks later, that same card is going for 500 bucks. And I'm like, you freaking idiot. Um, And then now we had some cards going to 100,000 print runs and now they're dropping back. The the Griffey. These kind of people get excited. The the Keith Shore Griffey that hit 100K is selling for about, I bought one for $10. Yeah, yeah. So now it's under. Like people are losing yeah. money on this. But wasn't the RMC, the Emerson Griffey going for like yeah. three hundred? I mean, the 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 very first Trouts. I mean, there were some that went for like five, six thousand. I mean, granted, if yeah. you've been keeping up on eBay, there's been a lot of returns on Twitter. Like people post it, which is like some of the, the some of the reasons. Like it was like hilarious, yeah. but eBay needs to figure, to figure out, out that stuff. Yeah. Um, I've I've had people screw me over on like stupid mm-hmm. stuff, like saying that I sent them a card and it was like dented, yeah. and I'm like, it, I, it did not leave the house that way. That was the mail, yeah. and but you're the seller, and that's a whole different yep. argument we can get into. Yep. Um, yeah. But definitely print run. It's interesting to see like how it went up and then it shot down real quick because you can get like a bin ball or a trout for like twenty bucks yep. now. I mean, I think that's a lot of some of the stuff he said and pissed off a lot of people. <laughs> um, dude, but what's your favorite your favorite Project 2020 card that's came out so far? Because um, I know you've been collecting. I've, I've been ta- getting a lot. Um, so I've collected most of the Ichiros except the first few. Um, I got... Okay, I like the black and white yeah. one. Like that one that like, came out right away. Yeah. That was a dope one. That one, um, I think um, the Ricky Henderson baller one okay that one was sweet like that's the one that i've got i've got it up on my shelf up there and i've got okay. that one and i've got a luca up there 
Um, those are the only two. I got a bunch in today. I don't know if you saw. I posted a little picture. Um, but probably yeah, did. like they I should like it. They, I should be a better Twitter friend. I'm not. <laughs> I'm selfish. They. Um, but yeah, I, I think <laughs> like you know, I I bought. I ordered a ton. Like I ordered um, from I think eighty to a hundred and ten. I ordered all of them, and up okay. till now, th- this is why I stopped. I, my number eighty just shipped yesterday like number it was processing until yesterday and i got the email saying oh it shipped and i you know i looked i'm like wow number 80 shipped today so now i have 20 more when they should have shipped like you're like i hope they like put bubble mailers yeah, and stuff yeah. and like some of the attention to detail like how it's getting deemed up yep and like some of the cases are <laughs> scratched but i saw uh, blake jameson said yeah. if any of them get deemed up or anything like any of his cards yep. He will replace the card, sign it, and then have it with his sticker. Mm-hmm. I mean, that just shot up a base card, yep. you know, 150 yeah, bucks. And uh, well, I like what he's done with his. Yep. Uh, he's been he, good. Like how he does his art. Yeah. His art's good. I think my favorite's the McGuire card. Yeah. Sorry, Home in America again. Um, hey, I'm a big I'm but a I just like the fan, strokes. So McGuire uh, is it, all free it, game. It's a beautiful yeah. card. It's, it's probably my favorite that's mm-hmm. came out. I like some of the Griffies that have been done. Um,. And some of the artwork I don't like. Uh, I think it's kind of like it's art. It's all a yeah. perspective. Like, are we gonna like it or are we not? I don't like any of Baller stuff, not because of who, who he is, he is <laughs> or what he stood yeah. for, like what he said. Uh-huh. I don't like blingy blingy yeah. show showy stuff. Yeah. Like, I like shiny things, mm-hmm. but I don't like like if it was shiny, mm-hmm. that would be cool. Like, I got really ex- uh, excited when I saw the Don, Don when he dropped his like Frank Thomas. The gold one. So like, that's yeah. yeah, the gold one. I'm like, that's gonna be sweet, and then friends sent me pictures of it and i'm like there's no shine it's like, just like where's yeah. the finish yeah i think um see i i so today i actually picked up a 92 draft pick like without the shine um, it wouldn't look like this oh yeah oh yeah i see it old school griffy yeah, yeah. and and gold but you're not gonna play every card in right gold. and so i i i like the art aspect of it like i think they look cool so I'm definitely, whatever ones I get, either I will be, because most of the, the cases I've bought, even from, like, people off Twitter, like, it's obviously not the people's fault, right? Like, tops shipped it that right. way. The cases are, they're fucked. Like, they, they scratches, well, and in shit top, inside. And I saw a tw- picture today where there was, like, a baby bee stuck inside the case. Like, how does that even happen, right? So my, my thing is I'm going to take them out of the cases that tops shipped them in i'm gonna put them in my own one touch that i buy and then if I, either i'm gonna do that or i'm gonna put i'm gonna get them all framed in like a little thing and you know are you just pop off the sticker too or like be like super like careful so you don't yeah. ruin that sticker yeah and i saw yeah. someone do it and they did it just with like a hair dryer and then peel it off okay on. seems to work i just rip that thing off and <laughs> screw it all up because like i have no finesse yeah. in my so life. then um, um but yeah it, it's I think it's cool. Um, it's definitely something that people have enjoyed and also something that people have not enjoyed. There's been a lot of people that have like hated yeah, on it. I, I think it's 50-50. I don't hate yeah. it. I like it and then I don't like it. It's art. Like right. It's like some of it I like, some mm-hmm. of it I don't like. It's like with any product. Like They come out with a different design and I'm like, oh, I like that design. And then some I'm like, you really missed the, yeah. missed, missed the whole thing with there. Yeah. Um, the thing, the other thing in the hobby that... I, it's been scratching my head lately, like with like products like going inflated. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna get liked for this, and I know I'm gonna probably get some hate. Um, I saw that with uh, Top Sapphire when that came mm-hmm. out, you were only allowed on Top's website to get two. Yep, two boxes. How does Houdini have all these boxes? That's cheap blowout cards for you guys. I know I'm gonna get some backlash. <laughs> I like Houdini. He's a good dude. He does a lot for the hobby. But you're only supposed to get two. Like, what are you running bots? Like, what's going on here? Because I'm seeing Phil Hughes and his buddy having six thousand dollar pack wars. Like, I, that's normally a product where it's like you can somewhat kind of get, like here and there. And now it's not even touchable. Like, yep. I don't have six thousand dollars for a pack of cards for a pack war yeah. for a box of cards. Yeah. Like, and that's a box that goes for two hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it really goes back to people that have the pull in the hobby, right? Like, there's definitely people that have more influence 
and not to say I don't yeah. I don't think it makes him a bad person. Like you know, like it does. The whole, the I've whole, talked to Phil. Phil's a great yeah. dude. Houdini's a great dude. There's a lot of guys in this. They're great. They just have that one up. Yeah, that's something that that normal collectors like us don't have. Yeah, and and I think I don't think it's fair to blame them for it. Like you know, either I mean, like not everybody has that ability to be you know they've been in it for long enough to where they've got that you know i don't know if you would call it prestige some sort of like status right that cred yeah, that like street, street cred, cred that cred. the hobby cred and i, I like you know either hobby and, cred. and the whole thing with bots for me is um it's the same thing with flipping right like it's gonna happen no bots bots are bullshit that's cheating it's flipping's but that being a whole different story. Bots are cheating. Bots are like, I'm programming all these things, and I'm going <laughs> to, like, to- and Tops allows it. They're like, you're buying all my shit. I don't care who's it's coming to. Yeah. And, like, normal people are sitting there, and they're like, I've been on Tops for six hours just trying to get one box. Yeah. I, I don't think it's fair. I mean, it ruined the sneaker game in its own way, too. Yeah, that, that is true. Um, Bot, th- get out. Like, figure it out how to fix it. Like, I've seen people, like create bots and like some like hire people up in the hobby like have had the emails like sent to them and like do you want to buy a bot and they're like no yeah it's not how it's supposed to go yeah um, yeah i mean see uh, i i want to agree i want to agree with you like i i see your point your tech side of you is like yeah yeah oh. like the tech side of me you know i i'm around this all day like i work in this i see you know automation is a huge thing in the industry like you know and Something like buying a box off Tops, Panini, any website, sneakers, limited release things, that is a task that I want to automate, right? Like, I don't want to sit there. Do, do you want to sit there and click on Tops website for Yeah, because I have more time than you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fair. But, like, <laughs> if, if you had the choice, right? Like, if you did it. You had to wait, or you By didn't have to. By principle, no. By principle, no. Yeah, right. So it makes sense in my head. I know what you're saying, but for me, like, it's either I don't know if it's because I'm in like this whole bubble of like, like world. Oh yeah, you know, you can automate this. So why not? You got guys like me who like I'm literally like emailing you how to use <laughs> Google Doc, and are like, I don't know, and I'm typing like this, and I'm like. I don't know how yeah. to do this. Oh, crap. <laughs> backspace, <laughs> backspace. Oh, okay. That worked. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, download Discord. And I'm like, it's on my phone. You're like, on your laptop. And I'm like, I can't just click it and it works like that. Like, it's a whole app. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, that's not how my brain yeah, works. Yeah, I, I see what, I, I definitely see your argument. Um, I mean, with, like, it's. the old heads in, like, the hobby, like. I know some guys that are like 50, 60, 70 years old. They're not going to, like, no. they're gonna, they just put their cards. They don't want to deal with the bots and yeah. stuff. Uh, I think there's a way that Tops has to figure out how to mediate that. Yeah. Mediate it. Like, there's got to be a better way because guys are just, it's not ruining the hobby, but it takes out some fun. Yeah. And, like, I think the guys that are at the top of the hobby that have a lot of say should. There's some guys who are really good at it being like, this is a no go. And some guys, like, they don't say it, but you're like, how are you getting all this product? Yeah. Like, where is that coming from? I mean, you know, um, it kind of goes back to the then, whole business thing. Like, if, if you're going to get it, yeah. you're going to get it. Like, it's... Well, he, he's the biggest... He's one of the... I I would say he's the biggest breaker, mm-hmm. like, in the hobby at the yeah. moment. Um, So, I can see how he's going to get that product. Mm-hmm. And he's backed by one of the biggest card companies, mm-hmm. reselling card companies out there mm-hmm. right now. So, I, I, I see that. I get it. Um. But to wrap things up, like, you have any thoughts, anything um, that you want to get out and say for, like, today's first episode that has gone wildly, like, good, horrible with Mitch surprise ideas that, like, we didn't plan? Um, I, I mean, I've had fun. We've had, a, like, an hour plus. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, I would love to hear feedback from anyone that listens, right? Like, it's always nice to sort of get an outside view because for you and I, when I listen to this, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna just be excited that i got a chance to like have a podcast like one of my dreams like like one baseball like ended couldn't do that anymore yep. and then like five six years down the road when i can't talk on a bar anymore like i'm very good at like being able to talk and i like to talk sports so i'm like i need to get something out as an outlet yeah and 
being like on a podcast or a radio, well, most radio shows you have to have a degree in communications. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to school. Not my right. Thing. So, so I'm like, next best thing I can do is podcast. Yep. And this is like a dream come true. Like, all like when you said you want to record today, I was like, oh, we're recording? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, I got to get everything set up and be ready. Yeah, and yeah. And we've had a, you know, yeah, I, I think I mean, it's been a it'll, big project, man. It'll definitely get and better I, with time. That's what I, I think, yeah. you know, we have a lot of stuff left to do. But, you know, I mean, how long has it been? We talked about it like a week and a half ago. Two weeks, like two ago. weeks ago. I think it's been two weeks and, of like. And just like really grinding it mm-hmm. out, and like it seems like we don't do something for a couple of days, and then like, I, cause I get lazy, and then you kind of like DM me, I'm like, oh, I need to do this, and then we grind out like fifty yeah. things, and then like all in one yeah. day. I think once we get like more work mm-hmm. in with each other's schedules and getting more of that flow, I think it'll go. And f- like I liked how the flow of everything went today. Mm-hmm. I hope people listen. Please do. Um, check us out on uh, uh, Twitter. We don't really have much posted on there. We're working on stuff. It's at just Mitchin. Um, my Twitter handle is at Mitchie4, M I T S C H E 4. Abe, what's yours? Dunk, Dunk Collective. Dunk Collective with just a V at the end, no E. Yeah. Yep. Fancy. Fancy. It has to be all fancy. <laughs> and um, our next episode will be coming out in uh, probably a couple of days. Yep. So thanks, guys, for listening. And um, have a good yeah. one. Thank you.